What's going on guys and welcome back to another satisfactory video where last time we unlocked basic steel production to produce steel beams, steel pipes and encased industrial beams. And we did all that in this extension that we added to the base. And in my eyes, it's pretty clean, uh, but there's a lot more work to do. And in today's episode, I want to look at assembly points. And as we know, when we expanded to the new base, this kind of factory here become desolate. But you don't need to worry because on the live stream, when we turn that whole plant off, I actually stored just over 500 smart plating in here, ready for the uh, objective to be completed. But then that leaves two items we need to create. We need to create the advanced wiring and the steel framework. And the advanced wiring requires uh, like copper and all of that kind of stuff. So what I want to do is I want to kind of upgrade this facility here and double the production and then send it over to our main base. So we're going to create a highway down here, bringing in the copper sheets, wire and cable. And I think this is where this top shelf is going to come into play because I need to make starters mortars and i need to make them to go into the new assembly points so yeah i think this up here will do perfectly which also means because we're bringing in more items we're making more items now this tiny storage is not going to cut it so my plan is is to rip this whole storage out including the sinks to move it to this side of the steel plant and yes we're going to turn it into this Okay, so the first plan of action is to increase our power production. As you know, we're sitting on 3000 megawatts at this coal power plant and at this one. So let's add 12 more coal generators to this plant. And bada bing, bada bosh, there we go. Increasing our power production to 3900 megawatts. I've also doubled the copper production as well by overclocking the miner to 270 per minute because obviously that's what a Mark III belt holds. And then I added three more smelters to the copper sheets line. And I've overclocked these four smelters to 200% clock speed, which gives us a 60 copper input take per minute. And as we know, four times 60 is 240, meaning the fifth smelter right here is just that normal clock speed to give us 30, equaling 270, which is what's coming on the input line. And then these two are merging together to go down to these constructors. And then them two are going down there. But then I've also got this fifth one being split into each of them lines just for symmetry sake. So 135 will go down this line and 135 will go down that line. And then obviously I've overclocked the constructors to 250%, which requires 50 copper ingots. Then this one requires 50 and then this one requires 35. And then we just did the same with the copper over here as well. We just basically overclocked the constructors and smelters to what is needed. And then built the bus line that goes along here and underneath, which just fits perfectly towards the desert facility. And of course, like I've been doing this playthrough, I'm just kind of building them on these pillars. So there was no point in me showing you how to do the coal because I've already done it. I've already showed you how to build the copper because I've already done it. It's just a matter of doubling the production. Hence the reason we're moving fast because there is a lot of stuff in this episode because I didn't realize when I was doing this on the live stream and getting everything prepped for the recording, it was a chonker. There was so much stuff and I was like, oh, I could have put this into two to three episodes. So I apologize and I won't do it in the future. But if you do want to watch on how I built everything, remember, go to my second YouTube channel, link in the description, if you want to see the VODs. And you can see day ones, day twos, day threes. I know there's a few of you that watch it. So, hello. So next, I want to kind of start putting the storage containers down. I've already kind of laid the foundation. Um, so I'm just going to kind of put these down like this. And then I'm going to put the conveyor, con a conveyor? conveyor holes just behind like this. And then then add the lifts, which I'm going to be... I'm just thinking I'm going to make them all Mark three, no matter of what they are, if, they, you know, if they're only making 40 per minute or something. Uh, just for future-proofing sake, because you never really want to mess around with your storage after it's done, especially when it comes to changing belts. You might have noticed as well, I've added a wall here with just kind of pillars, and then I've just kind of done the windows, which are clipping through the angled, uh, which is a very simple design. It's a very well-known design to kind of do. Uh, and I've made a doorway here, which links towards the steel building. And as you know, I've done the doors that I normally do, and this just takes us into the steel. So we'll come along here, we'll go into this room, which will then lead into the storage right here. 
And then I'm more than likely going to put down the maybe the resource sinks behind this. I don't know yet. Because what I think I've got to worry about is the amount of belts that's coming in. As you can see, we have 30. Is it 30? I can't remember what I put down. I was going to put down in total. I put down 26. And the reason I put down 26 is because here on my little spreadsheet to kind of keep everything organized, you can see these are the amount of items I, I more than likely want to be here. Because I like to bring everything up to heavy modular frames and computers um, into my starter factory. And this is my starter factory. Okay, so as you can see, I've been a little busy. I've added some lights in here and I've added some pillars. You know how to do these pillars because I've done it in my tips and tricks guide and I've showed you multiple times. And it's just a matter of putting your pillars at the side of these and rotating them like this and then placing them and then building up. And then with these lights, I showed it in the tips and tricks video, which is the first one. And all it is, is hiding them inside these pillars. And you can see it's placed right here. And then I always create these lights like this to kind of create like a capacitor at the side of the building. It kind of creates a bit more of a factory factory aesthetic kind of thing, right? And then underflooring, of course. Um, and then I've added these kind of the walkway straights here. I don't know how I feel about these just yet because um, going into like this and I'm going to come out and all that kind of stuff. So... I think we can reach. We can we can reach from here. I just don't need to go in here to grab them from here. So I don't have to come out, bend around and all that kind of stuff. The next thing I kind of want to do is... Oh, I've added the uh, railings here. And as you can tell, you can, we can't put a rail in there like that. So what you've got to do instead, you've just got to go grab yourself a road barrier and place that there. And then grab your pillar and replace it by holding control. I've had a few comments on people asking how I do that. Yeah, and it's just a matter of holding control and replacing the uh, the barrier with a, um, what they call, I keep forgetting these names, railings. <laughs> I had to look it up, I had to look it up. God damn it. Okay, so the next thing I normally do is I normally add signs to my storage so I can see what's in each container. But I also do something else. But I don't want to do the signs just yet because I don't know where things are going. But the other method is I normally come, so underneath the storage, grab myself a foundation, and then just bring that down by just a couple and then i remove one two layers and then on the third layer i'll just extend that out and then i grab myself a uh, conveyor pole line that up and then bring that up just like that and what this allows me to do is bring a belt out of here and it will snap to there just like that so when an item's in there it will actually sit on that belt so i know as a visual representation what's inside of it and then just remove what's underneath, remove the pole as well. And then everything's nice and clean. So you can kind of use what you, you need for your underflooring. And it won't clip underneath as well. So you just got to do that for all of these. And then I think we'll be nice. But I, I don't know about the color scheme yet. We've got green on this side, blue on that side. I don't know what to go with yet. We'll see. I'll probably let Twitch chat decide. Um, and yeah, we'll see what goes on. So I'm just looking at this and I'm just like, I'm just wondering about the flooring. I'm the, like, everything's dark up here. There's a little bit of contrast going on. So I'm just wondering if to actually put the grip metal foundation down. And I actually think I like that. Just because it kind of matches the walkways as well. So maybe we kind of finish this off all the way along here until we actually get the coated concrete foundation when we get plastic later. Because that is just a poggers goddamn flooring because all these lights will shine on it and we'll get reflections and it's just gonna look Mwah. <laughs> okay so i've just been taking a look at all this networking under here and this is gonna be a pain in my butt so as we know we've got all the storage here and we're gonna have the lifts coming down here right with a smart splitter right here with the corresponding item to go up the lift but then an overflow to get put on the smart splitter to go underneath to get pushed all the way underneath this way where i think the this is where the sinks are gonna go it makes more it makes the most logical sense right so with that being said this is the easy part the hardest bit is organizing this right here because all of these items that are being output for example the encased industrial beams all these concrete all these pipes everything that's going into that storage over there needs to root this way and we need to make kind of like an underground bus system which means we need to kind of remove what we've kind of done here clean it up a little bit because this cannot be expanded because of where i placed the storage hence the reason we've moved it so we're going to shift all of this all these cola stuff down here are going to remain the same um it's just that i'm going to bust everything over this way 
Um, so yeah, this is going to take some time. And there we go. We have now added a few of the bus lines, all the ones that was being sent over there. So you can see we've got some excess lines here for future items. For example, Caterium, because we will need to bring that Caterium from over there into this building today because we need it for the status. But I also like how the lights are coming through here to kind of light up these belts. So when it is nighttime, it's not like really dark underneath here. So it kind of just comes through and it works pretty nicely. So with all these items coming into these smart splitters here, I've not actually assigned them just yet because... I don't know if these are going to be the exact lines they're going to be on. So I might eventually remove them from that storage and shift it over by a couple. Because at the end of the day, it's all about line, well, cleaning the lines, right? So we don't know if there's any more need to squeeze through here. And if so, I can't do that because of that tiny gap. So I'm keeping an open mind. But what I would do normally is I'll put that to concrete like this. I'll do it just for you guys now. That will be set to concrete, and then this will be set to overflow. So when that line gets full, it will then get pushed underneath here, which will then go underneath, which I think this might be too short of an area to bring stuff. So I might bring this down to maybe about a six or a seven meter under underflooring. Does that make sense? Because that is our overflow, this is our underfloor, and this is our under underfloor. Or is this our second floor? But is this our second floor and then that one up there is our third floor? Hmm. Okay, so as you can tell, it is night time. And I'm not going to lie, I love the new sky that come with update 6. It's so much better than the one that was originally there. It was just like copied and pasted stars that was all in the shape. And when you saw it, you couldn't unsee it. But I love these. But with them out of the way, I've added some kind of neon signs here. Um, to kind of represent something that's a visual aid as well. So this is an output color. So when items are leaving the building, it's a pink. Uh, and if it's going in, it's green. Um, I think this is the kind of color I'm going for. It's melon colors. It's my and I'm just about to fall. God damn it. Did not mean to come down here. But um, yeah, so I kind of like it. And I've kind of done it with this bit as well. Uh, and then I've done it here as well where the ore goes into. Um, I've not done it anywhere else as of yet, but I kind of like it. It looks pretty cool, and it definitely works at night time. And all you need to do to do these is just go into a sign and literally just go down to layout, choose the only one that's with a word, and then uh, literally accept that. And then all you need to do is remove the word, make sure your emission strength is three, and select your color. So, for example, whatever color you want, let's go for, like, blue, whatever, and then just select that color. And then if, as long as that's three, it doesn't matter if this is matte or glossy, back up. And then, uh, yeah, you should be good. And then you've got a neon blue sign. And then you can do all kinds of stuff. And if you ever want to rotate these, all you need to do is just grab yourself a, uh, a pillar like this. Attach it to a wall or another pillar like you normally do. And then copy and paste it. Aim it at the side here, but hold control and rotate so if you ever want to do horizontal ones, if you want to do diagonal ones, then you can just hold, and then you can just, as you can see, it attaches there, right? So you can kind of play around with it and go up to this and copy that sign and then paste and paste. And then you've got a diagonal line. So you can make some wording with that and all that kind of stuff. So have fun with it. The next thing I wanted to show you with for the nighttime aesthetic feels was this. Kind of come up with this design kind of for the outside of the base. So if it's kind of extend this along a little bit um you can kind of see i've added like these green neons here i don't know if these are going to be the final color and kind of the pink like i said represents melons right it's kind of my brand um so we've got all the items going underneath like this and i've kind of done this kind of effect here like this to kind of create like spines and then just use steel beams and just gone from corners to corners and just kind of blended them together to kind of create my own window frame kind of and then, as you know, done my lights as I normally do, put it inside the pillar, powered it all up. Uh, but this time, I've actually added um, the light controls. So we can change the color of any light we want. So we can put this in here. And I originally, Twitch chat, I'd kind of decided to go with this kind of color, um, like a blue and purple, um, which could be kind of cool. The other option was to go with purple and red, Red for YouTube, purple for Twitch, because that's where I do this content on. Um, but then 
It also, I'm going to be connecting this one here to the outside lights. So as you can see, this light control panel actually controls these outside lights ones as well. So depending on what this right side is, you know, we can play around with it. We can set it to nighttime only as well. So when it comes nighttime, these nights will these lights will only turn on at night. Uh, so yeah, this is pretty cool. So you can save power during the day if you wanted to. So if these are off, you know. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Uh, but next, we've got some other stuff to do. And that is to work with the Caterium. And as you can see, I've got the Caterium coming along here, just like we've done on the normal belts. And that is sending 270 items per minute. It's going on the under the storage floor, which then comes all the way underneath this floor right here. And then comes up here, which I'm probably going to do a bridge across here, to be honest, with some doors, I think. And that goes up here with the uh, the Caterium, the pipes, and the steel beams. So if we make our way up here, I'll show you what I've been kind of planning and kind of working on. And as you can tell, this is going to be this area right here. We've got three segmented areas. We have this one, this one, and this one right here. This one right here is Quickwire, this one is Status, and this one is Rotors but with a little bit of a twist because we're going to be using alternate recipes. So for the stator recipe, we're going to be using the quickwire status, which requires 60 quickwire and 16 steel pipes per minute to output eight status. So we're going to use this one. Why? Because it's a better recipe. And two, we're not utilizing anything with quickwire yet. So we're going to use this. And as you know, quickwire uh, requires 45 per minute. And if we go into our calculator and do 270 divided by 45 is six machines. And that is six machines right there, six smelters. And them two get merged together. So that'll be sending 15 and 15 into here, which is going to need, uh, which is going to be sending 30. But it only requires 12. So we're actually sending 18 plus more. But if we actually overclock this to 250%, that will then go to 30. So that's going to utilize all 30 ingots that these two are actually merging together, which is going to produce 150 quickwire per constructor. And we're doing that for these two as well. So that's going to be more than enough for the actual status itself, which does mean we have excess, which will then go down to storage. And then for the steel rotors, these over here are basically another alternate recipe, which is going to require steel pipes and 30 wire. So the wire is going to be coming up from downstairs and I've got five machines down and five times 30 is 150, which as you know, when I overclocked the uh, copper lines, each of them copper lines are actually 150 each on, uh, well, each per line. So that kind of works out. So then when we've got these rotors done and then we've got the status done, we then need to send them elsewhere, which are going to go into another assembler, which is going to make mortars because that requires 10 rotors and 10 status. And we're going to do two of these. So we're going to need 20 rotors in total and 20 status. And we're going to be making in total 8, 16, 32 status. And over here, we're going to be making uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, uh, 25 rotors. I knew enough said 20 then. It is 25, right? 25, <laughs> yeah, five times five. It's 25, Bitsy. Um, yeah, so we're going to be making more than we need to. So we're, we're making five more rotors than we need to. And we're also making 12 more status than we need to. So, and then we're going to be making 10 mortars. So I'm more than likely going to put these down in like this section right here. Um, and kind of get everything done the same way I've done. Uh, so we're going to put two at side of each other. Uh, and then over here... We're going to do the same thing again, but this one is going to be versatile framework, which requires modular frames and steel beams, and they're being sent up here as well. And then we're also going to be putting down the automated wire in here, which is status and 50 cables. And I've, if we look over here and go under the flooring, I've got two lifts, one for wire, one for cable. Cable's going to go straight into that one. The wire is going to go into the steel rotors down here. Um, and then that will be our assembly parts that we need. Okay, so as you can tell, I've been a little bit busy with the belting down here. And I'm going to break this down for you. So we've got the Caterium going in, which is what we need at 270 per minute. And then this is going to be the 150 Caterium coming down. 
uh, well, the quick wire, sorry. This is going to be the 150 quick wire, and that's going to be the 150 quick wire. And as we know, the four stator machines require 240 quick wire for all four machines to run at 100% efficiency. So what I've done here, I've done a little bit of uh, load balancing. I've kind of got the 150 um, wire to come down here, and it's going to head straight that way, which is going to go, you know, into the stator machines. Um, but it's going to be, you know, nine. we need 90 more to come down here. So what I've done is I've got a smart splitter right here with Caterium basically being forced to go onto that line to maximize this line. And when that additional 90 gets added, that will then block this line up right here and it will push the rest this way. Which means the 90 that's on here, which will be excess 60, will merge with that um, 150 there to make a 210 line. Well... The 210 wall line will go here, which is why I put a sign here. And this line right here is what's going to be going to storage. So we have 210 Caterium ready to go to storage because that's the quick wire done with. And then on this side, I've added the pipes. And these pipes are going to be coming along here, going into the stators. But also, I'm going to loop them around because they need to go into the steel rotors as well. Because, you know, the steel rotors require uh, wire and rotors, right? Let me just double check before I end up making a mistake somewhere. Uh, wire and steel rotors, yeah. So them uh, steel pipes, because I'm bringing 270 down there, they're going to come along here and then the excess will get sent that way as well. So I'm going to get more belt working done and yeah, I'll be back in a minute. And bada bing, bada bush, it's done. A little bit more than I wanted to get done. Um... But everything's moving, everything's backing up into these lifts, which is going to be going down there, like I said earlier, into storage. But we have things moving. We have things being built. We have machines breathing. We have belts moving. We have ore being smelted. And we can see everything is uh, now, like, running. So everything obviously is backed up because it doesn't have anywhere to go just yet. But everything is fine and dandy. Um, like, all the machines are up and running. We've got the versatile frameworks uh, here now. And we've also got the um, advanced wiring as well. So they're just ready to now get stored. And we're only making these, you know, very, very, you know, not much per minute. Um, but everything else is kind of backing up. We've got mortars here now. Uh, and this right here is going to be for the rotors and the statters. Uh, because they are all backed up. So, like I said, if you want to see me build this bit by bit, if you want to learn about this, please go over and check my uh, VOD channel, and you can see me do this literally second by second um, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, next thing I want to do is kind of take this down to storage and get it all in there, uh, and then I want to do some more design work. I want to put the, the, the building around this and maybe get some lights in there and start kind of finishing off this area now since um you know we don't need to extend on top of this so yeah um yeah so let's kind of crack on with that and there we go the belts are now coming down moving with the other items they then make their way down here onto a double height bus line which then underneath all of these is the original lines that we placed down first and they all move along here and head to the corresponding storage which means we've now opened up this second section to even more items. And yes, if we look down below, I have now... Well, if I go over here, now I've got... I know what's going into my storages. I can then go into my smart splitters and set the overflow. So if we look underneath now and we come down here, we can see all my overflow merging together to maximize the 270 line so if i'm bringing down 20 frames and i'm bringing in you know 210 concrete i will merge them if they are neighboring belts and then i just kind of bring them along here and they go up into the sink room which i've not shown you yet so from the main storage room we just go up this ramp right here and this takes us into the sink room we've added some lights up here now We've got all of these in. Not all of them are functional just yet because not all the lines are being filled. But these first five are moving. So if we look in here, we can see that we're, you know, global is 55,000 points per minute. And we've got a nice crusty two just sitting there. But if we quickly just check our power as well, as well real quick, we can see we're on 3,000. 
And that is because all of the machines are starting to kind of boot up now. And it's a good job we built that XS900 because we would have been over the limit right now. So I'm happy we did that. So now that the storage is done, well, it's not done because we can, you know, we've got a lot of empty belts here for a lot more items we want to do. And like I said, this episode was a chonker. There is a lot of stuff. There was a lot of information. Like I said, I do apologize. And it won't be like that in future episodes. They will be more broken down into segments because technically I could have done that top section as one episode, the storage as a second episode. But because of how things have lined up, especially with the second channel and the, the Twitch, yeah. I, I'm learning from the mistakes as I go, okay? So I apologize, but hopefully this storage was worth it because I'm not going to lie, it's it's pretty insane. But also, if you notice, when I come through these doors, I've now added lights into this room and the, the like, just, just kind of just standard walls here right now because I don't know if I'm going to be expanding this anytime soon. But again, walkway to go around and all my machines are now glowing so I can see what they're doing. <laughs> So we will be adding a lot more lights to this and we've got a lot more floors to kind of do. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Check out my other content here. And again, um, I will be breaking these down a little bit shorter in the next few videos. I'll also be adding a roof to this. I know it's nighttime and it's hard to see, but you can see the twinkling lights, right? <laughs> anyway, keep smiling and I'll see you in another video.